Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. It's time to talk about curves. <laughs> In this installment of my OpenTX tutorial series, it's time to talk about curves. And curves are one of those things on the radio that I think some people understand pretty easily. Some people might look at them and feel a little intimidated because there's a lot going on and it, it just, there's not a lot of material out there to be honest with you. I've looked, there's, there's not. There, there's some people who talk about them, but there's not a lot of material explaining them. Today, in order to get through this material, there are a couple of things I wanna cover. Number one, I wanna talk about what curves are because I've already posted videos and the question's been posted, wait a minute, you just drew a straight line, how's that a curve? So we're gonna talk about that. Then we're gonna talk about what curves do. And then I'm gonna show you an example of what a curve actually does in the context of radio controlled transmitters. And then finally, we're gonna go through some examples. I've just got a handful of examples to show you. I've got one on the screen right now, but we'll go through some examples so you can see how these curves get applied in OpenTX and I'll give you some ideas to ponder and think about as you start exploring and making your own curves. All right, let's get started by talking about what curves are. I went out and did a little digging and this is probably one of the clearest definitions I was able to find. Steve Dugan, who has a bachelor in science in mathematics and physics from the University of Sydney says, in mathematics, the term curve is used to refer to the graphical representation of the solutions to a function or relation where the values of the solutions can be represented as a continuous line, a line segment, straight, curved, or wiggly. So with that out of the way, I like that definition because it applies. If you look at what I've got on the screen, this is a curve. These are line segments that are represented by a function. So while it doesn't fit the classical model of what people might say it, a curve is, meaning it's a gradual swoopy thing that looks like a bowl, economics use straight line curves, physics use straight line curves, mathematicians use straight line curves. So we're not gonna debate that anymore. A curve, the idea behind a curve is that it's a mathematical function that can be represented on a graph. And sometimes if your coefficient, if your second coefficient is always zero, the curve can be a straight line. So that that's that. So let's let's put that away. A curve is simply a representation of points from a mathematical function. That's what a curve is. Okay, number 2, let's talk about what curves do. The easiest way for me to do that is to show you. So right now I've got a curve on the screen. I've called this curve dead band and I've applied it to a model that I'm going to bring up in the simulator. All right, I'm going to bring up our input screen and I'm gonna show you a curve that I have applied right here. It says throttle and the curve is DB. That's my dead band curve. So I'm gonna highlight that one. We're gonna edit it. And the reason I wanted to show this to you is because if you remember, here's the curve as I defined it in OpenTX, right? That's how I defined it in OpenTX. Here's what it looks like on the radio. Do you see the similarity? It's the same curve. So now watch this. This is applied to my throttle and you can see my throttle currently is at negative 100. I've got negative 100 here, and I'm gonna move my throttle up. And as you can see, the throttle starts moving up the curve. As I move the throttle forward, you can see how the intersection points of the X and Y coordinates on this particular curve are joined at points along this line. So I'll keep moving my throttle forward, and there we go up to the top, and there we go. At the root of it, the curve changes and manipulates the output on a channel in relation to your stick movement. So while your stick might be linear over here, you can see that the output is clearly not linear on the curve. So the curve modifies your output at the simplest level. That's what it does. Okay, so we've discussed what curves are. We've discussed what they do. Now let's do some examples. That's the best way we can walk through it is do some examples. So I've already showed you a dead band curve, but now I wanna take this up a step. So I was talking to Dave the other day and he was telling me that when he flies pattern, what he likes is for his curve, his throttle curve, to have the stick at 50%, but the throttle at 60%. So you can see in this example, when my stick is at 50% right here, my power is also at 50%. My power output is also at 
if I come over here and look at channel 3's output, you see channel 3 says 0, that's my throttle. 0 is 50%. So my stick is in the 50% spot and my throttle is at 50%. Okay, so in this particular curve, when my throttle is at the midpoint, so is my output. My output's also at the midpoint. I've also introduced what's called a dead band. I'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to go back to the curve. So you, the point to take away from this little snippet is that when my throttle is at 50%, so is my output over here on channel three, okay? So let's go back and look at our curve and you can see that right here at the midpoint, when that throttle is right here in the middle, my output is also in the middle. In Dave's case, he said, well, I like my throttle output to be at 60% when my stick is in the middle. So how do you do that? Well, you take these two points right here and move them up. So we're gonna move these up and I think the value is 20. We're gonna use 20. And on this one, I'm gonna use 20 as well. So now you can see that I've moved, when my stick reaches the middle, the middle line, my power output's going to be at 60%. So let's fire the simulator up and take a look at it. Okay, you can see how my curve now has changed and now I've got my midpoint raised above that 50% line, okay? So let's move the throttle up to 50. Sorry, let's move the throttle up to zero. You can see that the input now is up to zero. It's in the center and that's referenced by the zero here on the chart. But look at where the throttle output is. If you look over here on the throttle output on channel three, it's at 20%. So what I've done effectively is I've remapped the throttle output based on the physical position of the stick. Remember what I said in the beginning, the curve modifies your output. So that's what's happened here is the curve modified our output. So our throttle output on channel three is now at 60% while our stick is only at 50%. Now, you can, now I wanna talk about the dead band. Let's talk about the dead band. You can see that we hit 60% at this point right here, and that's well before we hit the 50% throttle input point, which happens here. So I've got this thing called a dead band, and what that means in the airplane is that as you move the stick up and you hit this point, everything you do from that stick from here to here is not registered as an output. That's a dead band. That creates this dead space in the middle. So you might say, well, why do you want to do that? Well, if you're flying and you're going to spend most of your time flying, all you've got to do is move up into that range and you've got a little bit of space where you don't have to be precise. That'll let the motor run at 60% if that's what you do. And you say, well, John, what if I don't want a dead band? You see, you can't drag these left and right. I'm trying to drag it, it won't let me. I can go up and down, but it won't let me. So here's the power of OpenTX. I can come in here and say, I wanna change my X variable on this equation to be custom. So if I click on custom, now look what happened to my grid. It got, my, my curve got blown away, right? But it's easy to fix. We'll take this one down, we'll take this one up and we're halfway there. Now we're gonna take this guy, we had this set at 20. So I'm gonna click 20 and 20. Now here's the cool part, watch this. I can drag this point in to here. And let's say that I want that to be Let's say that I want that to be 10, negative. I'm gonna just go in here and type in a negative 10. And I'm gonna make this one 10 to mirror it. And then I gotta reset this up here to be 20 again, so I'm level. Now look what I've done. I've made that dead band much, much narrower. So if we go into the simulator now, you can see as I move my stick up, look at that, look how narrow that dead band is. So I'm gonna be very close to 50% on the stick. Okay, now I'm at 60% throttle output in my dead band, the middle spot. I'm not quite there. I will be in nine more points. So I'm gonna keep moving up. This is hard to do with a mouse. There you go. So that's the midpoint. That's 50% on my throttle. And look at that dead band. Look how narrow that is. All right, so the idea here, watch the throttle stick. The idea here is that if I'm down here or up to here, my throttle output's identical. Look at channel three, it's not changing. 
So I'm gonna move down again and up again. Channel three doesn't change. So this is all dead band. This doesn't register as an output on your radio. It, it doesn't register as an output on channel three. Okay, so that's an example of a throttle curve. It's just one example. You can say, well, I would like to add more lines and you can start adding more lines. You can make your dead point, your dead points. You could put your curve right there and you can say, well, here's the way I'd like mine to look. I'd like it to look like that. And then right off the dead band, I wanna shoot right up to 100%. You could do that as well. You can do that as well. There's a lot of different ways you can make it look depending on your flying needs, okay? So that's just one example. And I hope that gives you something to think about when it comes to applying a curve to your throttle. Let's imagine a knife edge curve for just a minute. You're out flying the plane, you put it over on its side, the starboard wing is aiming down, the port wing is aiming up, you add your rudder, and the plane pulls to the wheels. So when that happens, you have to pull a little elevator. Now imagine being on the port wing and you pull your rudder, the plane still pulls to the wheels, so you have to pull a little elevator, right? In both cases, you're pulling back on the elevator stick. It doesn't matter if you're on your left wing or your right wing. So in that case, you want a curve that looks something like this one, and I'm gonna go in the simulator and demonstrate what happens here. All right, let me direct your attention to channel two over here. That's my elevator channel, and I'm gonna pull the stick down. As I pull it down, you can see that channel two is going down to negative 100, okay? Now I'm gonna let it go, and we're gonna go the other direction with it this time. I'm gonna push up. Notice that the elevator is still going down. That's because I've applied my knife edge curve to my elevator. Again, this is not a mix video, okay? I did a mix video showing you how to mix this correctly. That's not the point here. The point is to show you that when you apply a curve that looks like the one that I showed you, this is what you get. So let's look at it in the radio. So that's always an easier place to see what's going on. So you can see it says KEE -E here. That's where I've got my curve applied. So I'm gonna click on this, click at it, and you can see that V curve I've got and watch as I pull the stick. You see how as I move that stick all the way down, my elevator goes to negative 100. I can, when I get down to zero, my elevator is centered. And as I move the stick up, it's also negative 100. That's, that's the way a V curve works. So that's the way a knife edge curve works. All right, the next one I wanna show you is flaps. So take a look at this one. Now, an, on a flap curve, you gotta think about the idea of starting with your flaps all the way up, right? So your flaps are fully retracted in the up position. You want that to be 100. But when you put them down, you only want them to say, go down to maybe, I don't know, 27. And the halfway point should be halfway between them. So that's why I use a two point curve because when I do that, every single time my detent's gonna land on the halfway point. So. I have takeoff flaps and I have landing flaps. Those are the two positions I generally use for flaps. And by using a two point curve like this, when I hit the detent on my slider, I'm always at the takeoff flat point. And when I hit the bottom of my slider, I'm always at the landing flat point. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the radio. Now I've applied this curve in my mixer. Not, not in my input, but I applied it in my mixer. So I'm using channel eight. My control is the right slider and I've got my flaps curve applied, all right? So let's take a look. When I use my right slider, what happens to my flaps? So you can see on channel eight where my flaps are assigned, they're at 100%. We'll assume that those are flaps up. So flaps are retracted. Now I'm gonna pull this down to the halfway point and you can see that I've only moved to 63%. Now I'll pull it down to the bottom and I've only moved to 27%. So what this shows you is one way to govern the end point for the travel on your flaps. And it's really easy to adjust it if you want, if you want to change that arrangement, you can come down here and say, well, I want them to go down further. So you just adjust your curve so it's got a little more, mo more movement and that's it. So that's it, that's a very simple, curve for flaps. Straight line, but it's a curve for flaps. All right, the next one I wanna show you is what's called a gain curve. Now a gain curve, you can say, John, what the heck are you talking about? If you use a flight controller and your flight controller gain is responsive from zero to 100, 
you can't have a knob that has a range of negative 100. See the negative 100 up here? You can't have a negative 100 to 100 because then half your movement on that potentiometer is going to be ignored. You lose half your resolution for gain. So by creating a simple gain curve and setting one point at zero and the other point at 100 and then applying this curve to a knob, now what's going to happen is you're going to see a full sweep from all the way counterclockwise to clockwise will give you the full resolution of your potentiometer and it'll give you the full resolution of the gain that your flight controller is expecting to see. So let's take a look at it in the simulator. I've got my gain applied to the S2 switch and that S2 switch is assigned to channel 9. So look over here on channel 9 and you can see that while my S2 switch is at the zero position, fully counterclockwise, channel 9 reads zero. So the gain on the computer says, okay, he's got the gain at zero. Now as I crank this thing up, watch what happens. We go from zero and I'm all the way counterclockwise now to 100. That's a real simple example to show how you can get your, your potentiometer to go from zero to 100 from full stop to full stop. Let me show you what it'll look like without this curve applied. Let's go back in the radio and we're going to our mixer and we're gonna take this gain curve out. We're gonna get rid of this. All right, so that's gone now. Go back in the simulator. And we'll look at we'll look at S2. Now look what happens. We have negative 100. S2 is all the way counterclockwise. Now what happens is I move this all the way up to the 12 o'clock position. We finally hit zero. And at that position, now your flight controller says, oh, okay, he's got his gain set to zero. Anything below that, the flight computer says, oh, he's got his gain set to zero. It doesn't register a negative value. What this means, your switch is only good from 12 o'clock to what, five o'clock? And you, your entire 100% of your tuning has to occur in that small amount of space. That's what I mean when I refer to resolution. By applying this gain curve, we get the full resolution and the full sweep of this switch to register from zero all the way to 100. Make sense? All right, that's why you apply a gain curve. We're on to the last thing and that's I wanted to show you a little bit about this thing called the curve generator because you can look at this and go, oh my gosh, what the heck? Why, why is this so confusing? Let me just cut to the chase. If you look at the world through a mathematical lens, you'll love this curve creator because you can say, oh, wait a minute, I want a symmetrical uh, curve and I want a coefficient of 60 and I want y to be 100 at x, and I want it to be uh, on both sides of x. So I hit apply, and there we go. Oh wait, no, I don't want it to be symmetrical. I want it to be asymmetrical with f of x equaling f of negative x. So I'm gonna hit apply. Now I've got everything on the same side of the curve. So you look at that, and if you're a math guy or gal, you'll say, you'll instantly understand this and have fun playing with it that way. If you're not, you don't need to use the simulator. You can just drag these dots to where you want them. You can say, okay, this is how I want my curve to look. If you don't know how to mathematically make that happen, don't worry about it. If you do know how to mathematically make that happen, you can get, you can come over here and say, well, I just want this to be asymmetrical with a coefficient of 90. You hit apply and bam, there's your curve. <laughs> so, and it's perfectly distributed. That's the other point. If you use the curve generator, you'll, or the curve creator, you'll see that your points are perfectly distributed. Okay, but you don't have to do it that way. You, you can just drag the dots around if you want. You don't have to get wrapped around the axle around what these formulas mean. If you're a math person and you know what these formulas mean, you don't need my help. <laughs> you, you can look at this and go, oh, I get it. I know what to do here. I'll set that to 50 and then apply and bada boom, I got a curve. <laughs> so you'll know. The last thing I want to point out on the curve screen, you can come in here and set the number of curve points to be whatever you want, up to like 17 points. So the more points you have, the more granular your curve is, right? So it smooths it out, it gives you more points along the curve line. You know, when we did the um, dead band example, I only needed four points on the curve. I'm gonna drag that one here, that one here, and that, you know, if that gets you what you need, then use that. When I do my gain and flap curves, I only use two points. I, I only use two. I'll say, all right, I want my bottom of my flaps to be there, I want the top of my flaps to be there. Okay, so in this case, we're using the curve, by the way, to govern the output. That We're using it to govern the output. We're putting a top end and a bottom end on the travel for our flaps in this example. 
Okay, so we've gone through a number of different examples of curves, and I want to show you one last thing, and that's how to apply them. There are a couple of different places in OpenTX where you can apply a curve. Now, I've already put a video together on inputs, mixes, and outputs, so I'm not going to cover that here. Make sure you watch that video. But you can apply curves in any of these three tabs. You can do it in your input screen, your mix screen, or your output screen. We'll do the throttle input. So in the throttle input, you come down to where it says curve, you highlight curve, and then you, on this list, you pick the curve that you want to use. So in my case, I wanted a dead band curve. That's the curve. That's how you apply it in inputs. Okay. You can also apply it in mixes. So in mixes, you notice I've got channel eight. That's where my flaps are assigned. I would open the flaps mix up and then under curve, you just select curve right here and then you apply the curve, just like on the input screen, no different. So there are my, there's my flaps curve, I've got that applied. And remember, if you watch the flight modes video, you can have this applied in only certain flight modes as well. Just throwing that out there. And then the last place that you'll generally see it is in the output screen. You can say, well, I've got channel nine as my uh, gain switch, so I wanna go ahead and apply my gain on my output. You can apply it on your input, your mix, and your output. For me, I've never applied a curve on an output, although I don't really see a reason why you couldn't. The only thing I can suggest is that the output's the last thing that happens. It's the last thing that occurs before it goes to your radio. So if you want to apply your gain on your output, you can do that. Uh, I've always historically applied my uh, things like flaps and gain in my mixer, and I've applied unusual curves like a knife edge curve or a throttle curve in my inputs. Hey, before you go, I just want you to know a full 66% of the people who watch my videos are, don't subscribe. So if you're one of those people who keeps coming back and watching this content, I would appreciate your subscription. It'd be nice of you to hit that button to help the channel grow and get better placement from YouTube when I put these videos out. For the rest of you, keep the comments coming. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to hit the t-shirt store and check out my Amazon affiliate links if you need consumable RC gear. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. So we're gonna look, whoops, where is it? Oh, it's on our model. Okay, so we'll look under our inputs. We'll give you the full resolution, resolution. boop. All right, and then the other thing I wanna point out on the curve, four points on the curve, that's it. So I'm gonna change this to, whoops, I messed up.